The small hospital in Stockwood, Washington, was usually quiet. There was the occasional tourist who arrived at the hospital due to a hunting accident, or a parent who was frantic because their child had broken an arm or leg, but the wounds inflicted on this patient baffled the medical team, even disturbed them. The noisy, frantic room where Nicholas took his last breath was efficiently cleaned and rearranged. A nurse covered his lifeless body with a blanket and wheeled him downstairs to the morgue. A howling sound from the air-conditioner duct filled the cold room. A dripping sink echoed against the walls as each droplet hit a metal pan at the bottom of the basin. Death made the air thick in the room of corpses. Nicholas was just one of many in permanent slumber. Suddenly there was a rush of air, a small movement. Nicholas' chest began to rise and fall with each breath of air he sucked into his lungs. His rapid blinking moved the sheet which covered his face. His body was cold. The white sheet over his body and face annoyed him. Nicholas sat up and pulled the sheet off his face in one swift movement. Unknown to him, his black nails were longer than usual. His irises were no longer brown, but matched his black pupils. What he noticed was a ravenous hunger that was gnawing at his stomach. Nicholas scanned the room in every direction, trying to figure out where he was, why he was there. Hello, he called out. His puzzled question echoed against the walls of the quiet room. His eyes darted from the drainage hole in the center of the tiled floor to the stainless steel door ten feet away from where he sat. He slid his legs off the table and stepped down onto the cold white tile. Nicholas was alone, or at least the only thing standing, wearing nothing. He took a step toward the door. He felt strange and uncoordinated, but he was confused by a strength he had never known before. His body was different. Something had changed. Nicholas grabbed a lab coat draped over the back of a chair and quickly put it on. Just outside his door, he heard two men talking. How could he hear people talking on the other side of a steel door? The voices were loud, clear, and distinct. His curiosity needed answers. He approached the door, held his breath, and leaned his ear to the cold metal. The men were discussing how perplexed the doctors were with the mauling of two people in the hospital that evening. Nicholas had no clue what they were talking about until one of them said the phrase that revealed it all, a phrase that froze Nicholas right where he was and made his knees weak. At least the twins survived. Instantly, Nicholas remembered why they were there. His memories flooded back like a crashing wave against his skull. It was the attack. Those wild, human-animal things attacked us out of nowhere. We were helpless and left there to die. Victoria didn't survive. My wife didn't survive. His mind raced around those words that seemed to echo in his head. Pain struck his stomach like an iron fist. He doubled over and grabbed his midsection. A mix between devastation and physical pain were holding him hostage. Victoria, he said reverently. He whispered her name. His quiet calls gradually became loud cries of anguish. No, Victoria, no! Nicholas crumpled to the floor. His wailing caused the two hefty security guards standing outside his door to enter the morgue. At their feet was Nicholas. His dark brown hair was plastered to his scalp from dried blood. His long black fingernails dug against the tiled floor. Sir, what are you doing in here? Patients are not allowed in this room. The guard leaned down to help Nicholas to his feet. Nicholas growled, deep, throaty growls that he had never heard come from his mouth, welled up from deep within his chest. The hunger pains were unbearable, and he suddenly felt a desire to hurt someone. Or worse, 